Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. The host. We got the heavens and the earth. What would be the host? There would be the stars, and that's a very important thing when you find host in the Bible, and here's the first place. So when they would say they worship the host of heaven, they're doing what the, what today's paper does, and it's always funny, right across from the comic strips. If not on a common strict prey called the horoscopes. Heavens and earth are finished. So man is not progressing from eight. The earth is not getting better. Things are not improving. And what I mean by that is the creation is not going forth. Everything that was created has been created and that's done. You're not going to find nothing new as far as God. Now science can intervene and mess up with genes and all that, but that's not God. That's Satan. So as far as realm of, of evolution is a lie, God stopped creating now. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. Creation stops. There's nothing more than being made or created. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Now, there we go. Here's another word. Rested. Does that mean that God went and got his craftmatic? Did he got his, his lounge chair? Did he go to bed? No. He took the break from the work. He's still working with the creation, according to Jesus. He says, doesn't God feed the, uh, the, the ravens? Doesn't God feed the, the, the fish? Doesn't God take care of the birds? Is there not a sparrow that falls to the ground that he does not see? So creation is done, but God is not done with his creation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Man is a created being by God, and God is long suffering, not willing that any should share it. He's not asleep, he's not tired, he is still working in means of salvation. As I read a letter to our family about a missionary, which I can't mention because a Muslim is, but a man got saved. God is still working as far as man and animals, and God blessed the seventh day. Now, okay, and they say the date here is 4,000, but this Genesis is not known to people until God gives Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and five books of Moses. He learns on Exodus 20 when he goes up to the Mount of God, and God gives him what we're reading. And then the rest of the books, they're written as Moses is going on. The Sabbath has not ever been written down unto Exodus 20 thereafter. We don't know if people knew about the Sabbath. But for the first revelation of the Sabbath is Moses by God to Israel. It has nothing to do with Gentiles or church. This book is set off in the Old Testament of Jews. It will be read to Jews, and they have the Sabbath, not Gentiles. 
And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified. Sanctified is to set apart for service holy. The Bible says we are to be sanctified. We are to escape the world and Satan and death and live a holy, righteous life for God. Now God has taken this Sabbath, this seventh day, and he has set it, he has made it holy for the Jews to honor creation and not whatever nonsense is out there. And when we get to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we now move to the first day. We move from, from creation till we move to Jesus Christ as the means of our salvation. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. We've already read that. Genesis 1. We're going to recap. You know, you know how many times you find creation in the Bible? It's over and over. It's in the Psalms. It's spoken by the prophet. It's spoken by Jesus. It's spoken in the epistles. This is important to God. The tabernacle is important to God. The birthday of Jesus is not that important. The birthday of Job, he said, I cursed the day I was born. The birthday of Jeremiah, I, I, it's, you know, it's no importance to me. Every plant of the field, before it was in the earth, so there was an earth, and there was an earth without the plants. We saw Genesis 1. Every herb of the field, before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. So up to the flood of Noah, there is no rain. There was not a man to till the ground. There's no man. He hasn't been made yet. He's made on the sixth day. But there went a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So when Noah gets on his ark, when Noah gets street preaching, and he says, behold, the earth is going to rain, it's going to flood, the people will look at him like, hey, Bob, what? what's this rain he's talking about? I don't know. It's a coop. Don't listen to him. And you get the same aspect today. You're on the street, you're preaching Jesus, and you're, Bob, what's that guy? For? I don't listen to him. He's, he's something about Jesus. I, you know, he's just foolish. Something about Jesus is coming. They never seen Jesus come. They never seen rain. And whatever kind of mist this was, it watered the entire earth. There was never a rainy day for Adam and Eve up to Noah's Ark. So I guess there have been no weathermen. I would assume that God would have it at specific times. I don't know. That's all we know. There's, there's a mist. And the Lord God formed. That's an interesting word that just comes up. Formed. Designed. Man out of the dust of the ground. We're dirt. We're not even dirt. We're dust. Just flakes off the ground. So do you know what, when you dust your house, do you know what most of that dust is? It's you. Your hair, your, your skin is flaking. You are dust. And breathe. Kind of like a CPR. God took that form of that body and breathed into that man, into his nostrils. The breath of life. God stepped down from his throne and put his mouth upon man's nose and, went, and even Jesus had breathed on his disciples to receive the spirit. Receive the breath of life. So what's the first thing? Man can live without water. Man can live without food. That's the order. But the man cannot live without air. 
If you don't have oxygen going to your body after a certain period of time, your brain dies. If you are revived, most cases, you, you will be not yourself no longer. In a state that they call a vegetable. Oxygen in air is very important to our life. It's the first thing that came to us. God did not give us a hamburger. God did not give us a glass of water. He breathed. And isn't it funny that the last day, last 24 hours of Jesus' life, no one gave him anything to eat, nobody gave him anything to drink. That runs back to the creation of man. He breathed life. Life is in the, in, is in the air. And man became a living soul. He's a body, dust. He is a spirit, that breath that came from God. And he has a soul, the living soul. The triunity of the Trinity that we are made in the image of God, body, soul, and spirit. There it is. That's the image of God. And the Lord God planted a garden. Now, I don't think God came down and, and you know, made rolls and dug up the ground and took a seed and put it down. He, he didn't need to do that. God spoke it into existence that we don't see in Genesis 1. We don't see to Genesis 2 to chapter 8. And the first time you see planted and the word garden are together. Here they are. And we see Jesus going off into a garden to pray his final prayer with his disciples. We see Mary weeping at the sepulcher, seeing a man that she supposed was to be the gardener, who was Jesus Christ himself. Well, look at Jesus being Adam. What was in that garden? We don't know. Eastward in Eden. So the Garden of Eden. Eden, think about Eden as maybe a circle or square, whatever you want to. Okay? Picture that square, that circle. Eastward in that Eden. Eastward in Daytona Beach. Eastward in whatever city you live in or town. Eastward of that place you live is the garden. And we get the first of the sun rising. That garden pictures the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because here comes the sun. And we get that first morning star. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So if this is an order, I don't know. God made the man, and then he made the garden, and then he put the man in there. If that's the order. So like he gave man, all right, here you go. Man, the, like I said yesterday, the first occupation is not prostitution. Man would love that to be it. And you can't have prostitution, we're going to see in a moment, because here's the man, he has nobody else in the world but animals. And the first occupation in the Bible is you're in that garden and you're the husbandman, take care of that garden. So you would call it the old farmer's ornament. Why would he call it the old farmer's ornament? And now the ground. The ground's not cursed yet. If we didn't have Genesis 3 to Revelation 22, this ground would have been pure, it would have been weedless, no poison ivy. I can't even imagine no thorns, no weeds. I can't even imagine what the flowers and the fruit look like or taste like. 
without that curse. There's no bugs to eat the, the plants. There's no need for fertilizer. There's no need for pest, pest, pesticide. And you got to really look at yourself. What did Adam have to do to dress this garden? He would have to start, he would have to prune because everything just be growing like crazy. That's the only thing I could think that Adam would have to do. He would have to prune. Isn't that what God does to us in our life? He prunes off the bad stuff so we can produce better fruit. You will take an apple tree, you will trim that apple tree at the right time. So what branch is not going to carry fruit, you don't want the tree to put that effort there. You're going to remove that branch that is not going to do anything. So everything can be concentrated where that apple is going to be. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree. Every tree. <clears throat> that is pleasant to the sight. No curse. Adam will look at those trees and say, wow. Isn't that great? Now, we got a remarkable thing here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 real quick. In verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, we'll go back to chapter 2 again. What was it about that tree of knowledge of good and evil that stood out above all the other beautiful trees? You gotta ask yourself that question. What was it? We are in a pre-cursed world. Everything is beautiful to the sight. Something about that tree. And good for food. So this would be trees that are fruit trees. The tree of life. Also in the midst of the garden. So the tree of life is right in the middle of that garden on the east side of Eden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, this is not figurative. They will teach. There are men and women out there teaching this is figurative. We know by Eve's action it's not. Now watch this. Ready? Verse 9 again. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. Eve saw it was good. Good for food. Semicolon. The tree of life also is in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That fruit had to be good. And if that's the case, God planted that tree. Not Satan. God is going to throw a temptation like he did with Abraham and Isaac. I want to see what you're going to do. I want to see what you love more. God allowed Jesus 40 days of fasting and meet the match with, with Satan in the wilderness and didn't stop him. And God will throw our sins. Now listen, God will not put beer in front of my eyes. Satan will not put beer in front of my eyes. I'm, I'm not going to fall for it. I can't stand it. It stinks. It's stupid. It's a waste of money. But there are sometimes God will put things that are my sin. And I want to see how well you're doing loving me. And if you fall, I want you to see how bad you are and get off that high chair that you're on. That you're doing so great and wonderful because look what you just did again. And God don't want robots worshiping him. And he's going to give Adam and Eve the choice with a stern warning. And Satan hears his warning and Satan knows. And a river. So there was a river. Now these rivers and this garden and everything is pre-Noic flood. You're not going to find anywhere in the world that's going to look like Genesis chapter 2. It's all been disrupted by 
A entire world of filled with water. And Eden, not there. The garden, been overflowing with water. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. So this garden was, was, I'm trying to think of the word they used for water, irrigated by a river. God said, Adam, here's this garden. And to help you out, I'm going to put a river right in the middle of it, just for you. How's that? Now, isn't that great of God? And Jesus said, Jesus said, I'm the water of life. Here's Jesus in the garden with Adam. I am that river. And Jesus spoke about, out of his belly shall flow a river of water. And from thence it parted, it became into four heads. Ezekiel 37.10 The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasses the whole land of Havilah. And I may be saying it wrong. Where there is gold. And to Adam, which means what? Nothing. He don't need money. He's not making golden statues. He has no gold standard. And it's yet funny that here's the first place gold shows up in the Bible. And it has nothing to do with Adam at all. Or Eve that comes along. Adam is not going to get gold and make a wedding burning for Eve. Quite interesting. And the gold of that land is good. There is delilium and the onyx stone. And you'll see onyx stone later on too. Here's the first here's gems showing up in the Bible and they're in the garden. I don't know what Adam would have to do with that. There's no wife yet. Just the animals. The beauty of Denizoran. Yeah, the beauty. And we see the city of New Jerusalem, and God said, I just garnished it. And maybe where this garden is, maybe you just take a walk around, and you would just see all these colorful gems, just not in the ground, they're just there. And when that sun would come up, and then that rainbow color in the spectrum, that garden had to be beautiful. And think about when we get to New Jerusalem where the tree of life is there. And the water of life is there. And there are gemstones in the foundation of Jerusalem. Hey, we're going right back to the garden. The only thing we're going to have different with Adam, the throne will be where we are. God's throne is not here. So just picture these stones in the glitter. All right, gold. It's it's good. There's no curse. So this gold, according to Revelation 22, would have to be clear gold, pure. The name of the second river is Gihon. And they say it, 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 today is the Nile. The same is that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. But remember, in Noah's day, the entire earth was destructed by water covering all the way to the top atmosphere over the mountains. Yeah, God's doing this at the directions for Moses. Yeah. So these rivers he's giving are. Yeah, that's true too. But we are, this is in a pre flood, pre fall condition. And the name of the third river is Hittikil. They say the ancient name is the Tigris River. 
that is it with goes through the east of Assyria again like Tracy said there was no Assyria back then in Adam's time you say well and you're gonna see as you read your Bible especially when it talks about from Dan to Bathsheba and you're gonna say well wait a minute Dan hasn't been born yet but somebody has taken the Bible through the Holy Spirit and gone back and say this is the two places or those names could be prophecy by the Holy Spirit to say hey this place will be named Bathsheba it will be named Dan and the fourth river is Euphrates so there's the four there's the river with the four heads and the Lord God took the man like Ezekiel like John and put him into the garden John 20 verse 15 of Eden to dress it husbandman there is work before the fall there is no curse and God says okay this is your garden it's my garden work and so some of the parables and some of the illustrations Jesus will use is a man going into a vineyard a man doing service for the father that is Adam and God the father you don't believe me Luke says when it goes to genealogy of Mary and her family the son of Adam the son of God so pay attention when you got a father and son relation and service and work in your Bible because that goes all the way back to Adam it's an important note and looky here looky here's the first time you see the word dress and what's in relation to work it has nothing to do with what a woman wears or what a man wears isn't that interesting we make a big deal about dress and then yet we don't do no work to dress it and to keep it so I like I said I would assume he was a pruner because God's a pruner because he don't need a weed and he don't need to kill bugs and the Lord God commanded the man this is a command what's the first commandment in the Bible here it is this is the first time commandment shows up and he's not talking to Israel he's talking to Adam in his pure uncursed state he says Adam I got a commandment for you it's, it's a free will it's a command it's <coughs> forgive me allergies it's a command it's not orders it's a warning it does not say thou shalt not eat of that tree take note of that it starts off of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat tree of life oranges apples whatever was there they're yours enjoy but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in that for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die we get halfway through the command then thou see thou shalt not eat of it the warning is do not eat but your free will is you can have whatever you want but do not this one Again, the question is, well, Adam didn't die when he ate that fruit. Okay, I got the answer for that. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. If a man lies, does God strike him dead at that moment? There'd be nobody left in this world. The statement is the wages of sin is death. Because we sin, death will come. It says, Thou shalt surely die. It did not say when. It did not say, Adam, if you eat that fruit, you're going to die today. No, it don't say that. It says, Thou shalt surely die. 
if you go to your doctor and he checks you over, he says, listen, you know what? You're going to die. Which is true. Very true thing. But he can't tell you when. There's no problem with that verse. There's no problem with that statement. Adam's going to die if he sins. And didn't say when. And the Lord God said, It's not good that a man should be alone. There's the first time alone shows up. Man's there all by himself. And God says, That's not good. Look at all the good things we read. It is not good. What is to God not good? That man's alone. That the man should be alone. I will make him. And help me. Notice the first time help shows up. And the word meet. M-E-E-T. What is the first word. In the Bible. For wife. That you would not believe most Christian husbands. Would describe their wife as. It's not wife. W-I-F-E. The first title that a woman to be to be of a husband by God because God said right to be a help me you couldn't pass that title onto a woman in America today without getting beat up by her purse or her barbells many women there was there was one of the judge programs I watched the other day he said listen she, she to make my meals and clean up, and that judge got so angry. How dare you? That's that's the Bible way. I can give you plenty of scripture too. She's to help that man because he can't help himself before the curse. He needs help. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. And brought them unto Adam. Do you know another time that animals were brought to a man? Noah. Now you want an interesting study. You lay out Adam and Noah together. And all the likeness between the two. I think that statement is there. He made them, and then he br brings them to. He, he God takes the credit for Nick because we already know the animals were made on the fourth and fifth day, and man, fifth, fifth and sixth day, and then then the then the it says the cattle. Let's see, Genesis one, verse twenty four. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creature after his kind, creepy things, and the beasts of the earth. After his kind, it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the ground after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish which are already there, over the fowl of the air which is already there, over the cattle which are over there, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing which is there. But man, I think God's taking the credit for the animals. It's almost like he knows later on, Romans chapter 1, man is going to take the credit for making the animal. Through evolution. I have given you... Where am I? I'm doing chapter 1. Uh, the fowl there and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Just like he, he brought them to Noah to spare their lives. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature... That was the name thereof. So man names his pets, his animals, after what Adam done. And these names of these animals, you, the Bible says, you can trace them back to what Adam called. And there are animals today that they're given names because they never found them before. They're just showing up and they're giving them names, but that's not the name that Adam gave them. Because the Bible says God brought all the animals to him. Even the ones that are gone. God gave name to all God and Adam gave names to all cattle. 
to fowl the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. So verse 18 actually shows up after verse 20. Or God says, okay, here's these animals. Give them a name. Are any of those animals fit for you, Adam? And this verse now, 21, 22, 23, and 24, rules out bestiality. Bestiality was never meant for man. Adam looked at those animals. He named those animals. He said, nope, none of these are good for me. They cannot be my help me. And what's to help me? Produce children to replenish the earth. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep anesthesia without a needle. And many people will say, and it's possibly the truth, that Adam actually died. And you can find the word sleep in the Bible referencing death. But here, this is where sleep first shows up. It's God putting a man to sleep so he can perform an operation. Isn't that interesting? God puts him to sleep. To fall upon uh, deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he, God, took one of his ribs. And we can only maybe assume by the Bible the fifth rib. And closed up the flesh in place of instead thereof. So God opened him up took the rib, and then sold them back up. Here's your first surgeon in the Bible. Your first anesthesiologist in the Bible. And that rib is close to the heart. It's close to the vital organs. That's what a wife should be. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. This is a secondary creation. This creation comes from the man. Now not every man has the missing rib. That was just Adam. And he made Eve. But she's not named Eve. She's named to help me. And Adam said. This is the first man that speaks in the Bible. This is now bone of my bones. What bones could Adam see in his physical body? If you were to look at your body in a mirror, which, which the only thing he would have is a river, a body of water, a lake, what bones would he be able to see? Teeth. And yet he knows what bones are. He's no dummy. He knows what's inside of his body. And when we come across the first time the word bone, we're talking about Adam's help me, his wife. The flesh of my flesh. Well, you know what flesh is. She shall be called woman. There's the first time woman shows up. She's a female of Adam to be his help me. And we've already read last night that there's a male and a female. There's no other. She's a man with a womb. Womb man. Because she was taken out of man. Now, and some people are going to have a problem with this, but I don't care. You see flesh and bone. You don't see no blood. And there's a man that teaches. I've listened to all his messages. And it looks biblically sound. They had no blood. And I'm not going to go any further with that. So, again, this is pre-fall. Pre-curse. What's one of the problems that women get from after the fall of their time in a month? It would not be here. Because there's no looks, there's no blood. 
she won't need iron. Therefore, by the way, too, if Adam is in a pure state in Eve right now, you think they would ever cut themselves? You think they would need a white blood cell to stop infection? There is no infection. They are a perfect human race with no pain, no sorrow. Listen, we're not going to cut ourselves in, in New Jerusalem. We won't need band-aids. Therefore, Matthew 19, 5, 1 Corinthians 6, 16, Ephesians 5, 31, Mark 10, 17, 10, 17. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and that word is changed, cleave. Today you think of a cleaver and you chop meat. There's the first time the word cleave shows up. It means to stick to, become one. There's father and mother the first time showing up. Wait a minute. Where did, where did Adam get father and mother? He didn't. He had no father. He had no mother. Adam was no dummy. Adam is a prophet because he says a father shall leave a man shall leave his father and his mother. That's a prophecy. Because it could not have been Adam and Eve because they had no mother and they had no father. No belly button. And shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Marriage is physical. It's when flesh joins flesh. Because the next statement, and they were both naked. Um, I don't know how to be clean, but when husband and wife join each other, and they're naked, and the Bible calls it the marriage bed, and he tells that woman, he says, listen, I know you, ain't, you don't have a husband, but you've got like seven of them, was it? Well, I don't think she stood at an altar with seven marriage certificates. I think she was in seven different beds. And that can run the problem with some ministers and preachers. You have to change that. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked. The man and his wife, the male and the female, and were not ashamed. And shame don't come up into sin. Come. They're walking around, they're running around, they got all the animals, and there is no shame. They are 100% sinless. Perfection. Boy, have we come a long way. And notice how people are trying to get back naked again. They're trying to put themselves back in that garden. Utopia. No, we're sinners now. We need to be cleaned and washed and clothed. 